Hey everyone. Today we will cover a beautiful application of probability in combinatorics. It will be about random permutations. Recall that a permutation is any rearrangement of n distinct objects. If I shuffle a deck of cards, that's a permutation, for example. There are exactly n factorial different permutations of n objects. Any permutation breaks down into cycles. Suppose we have 10 people who came to a party. After the party, they grab jackets and go home without looking. So not everyone grabbed their own jacket. Maybe only person six grabbed her own jacket. But person one grabbed the jacket of person three. And person two grabbed the jacket of the person 10, and so on. This assignment of jackets to people is a permutation. Now, suppose you're person one. You came home and you discover that you grabbed someone else's jacket, namely jacket of the person number three. What do you do? You call person number three and ask, hey, did you grab my jacket? Because I grabbed yours. And unfortunately, person number three says, no, actually, I grabbed someone else's. I grabbed the jacket of person number four. So then they call person number four and ask, whose jacket did you get? And person number four says, well, I grab person number seven's jacket. And it goes on, right? Person number seven, you call them and they say, actually, I grabbed the jacket of the person number one. And here you're happy. Oh yeah, this is my jacket. So we have a cycle here. Person one grabbed the jacket of person number three. Person three grabbed the jacket of person number four. Person four grabbed the jacket of person number seven. And person number seven grabbed the jacket of person number one. And the cycle is complete. Great. These people figured out their own jackets. Let's remove them from the problem. One, three, four, and seven. And let's deal with the remaining people. So now person number two comes home and sees that she got jacket from person number 10. She calls person number 10. Hey, did you get my jacket? Because I get yours. Says, no, I get fifth jacket. They call person number five. And person number five says, yeah, I actually got the jacket from person number two. So here's another cycle. Two, 10, and five. Great. These three people figured out their jackets. And we can remove them from the problem. Two, 10, and five. And let's look at the remaining people. Well, person number six is the luckiest guy. He actually got his own jacket. So person number six forms a cycle on its own. And let's remove him. And that leaves us with two people. Person eight grabbed the jacket of person number nine and vice versa. So they form a little cycle too, eight and nine. And so we broke down this permutation into a bunch of cycles. We can do it with any permutation. Check it out. Get yourself any permutation of your choice and break it down into cycles like we did. Now we can ask a lot of cool math questions. When people grab their jackets at random, in other words, when this permutation is a random permutation, how many cycles do we expect? There could be as many as n cycles, if everybody gets their own jackets, or as few as one huge cycle. So question. What is the expected number of cycles in a random permutation? Any permutation is equally likely. Now, before we try to solve this problem formally, let's develop some intuition. What do you expect? Do you expect a random permutation to have a lot of cycles or very few cycles? Suppose we are person number one. Do we expect to find our jacket very soon or not? What's the probability that you get your own jacket in the cycle completes immediately? Well, that probability is one over n. Suppose that doesn't happen and you discover that you have jacket of someone else, person number three, you call person number three. What's the probability that that person has your jacket, in which case the cycle would complete and it will have length two? Well, that probability will be also something like one over n. And this, this continues. So with probabilities of success as low as one over n in each call, how many calls do you expect before you succeed? About n. So intuitively, the first cycle is supposed to have length about n. Well, suppose n over 2, just for the kids. Once we remove that first cycle, once we remove half of the people from the picture, now we repeat. How long do we expect the cycle to be? Well, maybe half of the size of the remaining people. So the second cycle would be n over 4, maybe. And the third cycle will be n over 8. Every time we divide by 2 the number of people, it's not a rigorous argument. It's just our feeling. 
Now, how long can this sequence be? Sooner or later, we get down to just one person. Every time we reduce the number of people by the factor of two. So how long does it take to get down to one person? It's log of n, log base two. So our intuitive answer to this question, what is the expected number of cycles in random permutation, is log n. And that intuition is actually correct. We will prove the theorem that says that the expected number of cycles in a random permutation of n elements is the sum from 1 to n of 1 over k. This is a partial sum of a harmonic series. The harmonic series diverges. And so as we increase n, the sum goes up to infinity. But the harmonic series diverges very, very slowly. It diverges at a logarithmic rate. So this series is about log n plus or minus plus a little error term of 0, 58. It's called Euler-Mascheroni constant. The main message of this theorem is that the expected number of cycles is log n, approximately. To prove this theorem, we will use a very neat trick. In order to count the number of cycles, and in this example, the count will be four, we assign weight to each element. For any element of a permutation of length four, we assign weight one over four. So weight one over four is assigned to these four people, one, three, four, and seven. To every element in a cycle of length three, we assign weight one third. So weight one third is assigned to people two, five, and 10. For every element in a cycle of length two, we assign weight one half. So weight one half is assigned to people eight and nine. And finally, to every person in a cycle of length one, in this case, there is only one such person, we assign weight one. Why do we do this? If we sum these four weights, we get one four plus one four plus one four plus one four, which is one. One third plus one third plus one third. We get again one. Here we get one. And here, one half plus one half, we also get one. And so the total sum of all the weights is four, is the number of cycles. So this is our smart proposal to count the number of cycles. As we sum all these weights for all the elements, we get the number of cycles. Let's write this down like this. And let's express it more formally. For every element j, let's look at the length of the cycle that element is in and call it yj. Then the weight of that element will be 1 over 1j. For instance, if the cycle has length 4, then the weight will be 1 fourth. Then we sum all these weights over all elements, j from 1 to n, and that becomes the number of cycles. Let's call it x. We want to compute the expected value of x. The expected value of the sum is the sum of the expected values. Now, these individual expected values don't even depend on j. This is by symmetry. All these people have the same probabilities of everything. So all these expectations are the same as expectation of one over the first element, let's say. And there are n such terms in the sum. So we reduced the problem to computing this expected value. Let's do it using the definition of expectation. Y1 is the length of the cycle. So it can take values 1, 2, 3, 4, up to n. Then 1 over y1 is a random variable that takes values 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, and so on, 1 over n. So its expected value, by definition, is the sum of the value that it can take, such as 1 third, or generally 1 over k, times the probability that it takes that value. The probability that 1 over y1 takes value 1 over k. Now we can flip this equality here and get this. So we reduced the problem to computing this probability. By definition, 
This is the probability that element one is in a cycle of length k. Let's compute it. Let's first compute it for k equal one and maybe k equal two and k equal three, and we'll see the pattern. So let's compute the probability that element one is in a cycle of length one. That means that person one grabbed her own jacket. There are n jackets total, and the probability that she grabbed that one jacket out of n possible is one over n. So we computed this for k equal one. Let's do the same for k equal two. Compute the probability that a given element is in a cycle of length two. Think of one as you, yourself. For this to happen, we have to have someone else's jacket. And that someone else has to have our jacket. What's the probability that we have someone else's jacket? That's n minus 1 over n, because there are n minus 1 jackets other than our own out of n possible jackets. Once we know that we have someone else's jacket, let's call that person Alice, we call Alice and say, hey, I have your jacket. Do you have mine? What's the probability that she has ours? That probability is 1 over n minus 1. Your jacket, which is one possibility, out of n minus 1 possibilities. Why n minus 1? Because she knows that you have her jacket. So there are only n minus 1 available jackets for Alice to have. So the probability that we have someone else's jacket is this. Conditioned on that fact, the probability that someone else has our jacket is this. And by the chaining rule for conditioning, this probability equals the product. n minus 1 cancels, and we get 1 over n, just like in the previous case. In fact, you will have the same answer no matter what length of the cycle. So the probability that 1 is in a cycle of length k will also be 1 over n. Do it yourself. The same argument, you'll have a telescoping sum. Everything will cancel except 1 and n. Going back, we established that this probability is always 1 over n. And so the expected value equals the sum of 1 over k times 1 over n. 1 over n is a common factor, and this becomes 1 over n times the harmonic sum. So we computed this term and get the expected value of x equals n times this term. And we get that expected value of x, the number of cycles in the random permutation, is the sum. So we proved this beautiful theorem that the expected number of cycles in a random permutation is the harmonic sum, which is approximately logarithmic in the number of objects in it. This is only one example where probability was applied in a beautiful way to study a combinatorial problem. There are a lot more such examples in probabilistic combinatorics. Stay with me for the next episode. See you.